Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. So I'm continuing my series on the insights into the lives of our Lord and his holy mother. I'm going to look at the revelations given to St. Bridget of Sweden today. Now, the revelations of St. Bridget of Sweden are fascinating because they're some of the oldest revelations, uh, recordings of a mystic on the life of our Lord and his holy mother. You know, St. Bridget was in the um, 13th century. Isn't that right? Let me make sure I got that written down. 13th century. Um, and when she was in her 10th year of life, she began having visions of our Lord and his holy mother. No, I got it wrong. She's at the, <laughs> she's in the worst century. It's, it's when you get a 13, you immediately think of 13th century, but it's not, it's 14, 14th century. She's born 1303. It's just been the amazing uh, century of great Christian saints um, and great popes. And then you get the 14th century disaster. You've got plagues, you've got a schism. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty awful century. And she's born into it. And she has these visions from her 10th year of age of Our Lady and Our Lord. And obviously we're dealing with a medieval writer here. You can read all her writing, her book of, um, her book is, her book is called The Revelations, The Revelations of St. Bridget. Now, they were translated, I've got it written down, um, they were translated, they were known in English in fragments, you know, through the high middle ages, because many saints, um, many saints wanted to uh, co contemplate them further because they were approved by the church. They received papal approval. And so they are among um, mystical works, uh, unique, almost unique, I think, in that they've actually been approved by the, the church in their entirety. Um, but okay, because she's writing in the 14th century, even when you translate it into English, stylistically, a lot of her insights are insights that that are insights that of someone from the 14th century would would pick up on that that we probably wouldn't pick up on today. So, you know, there's a lot of numbers like um, our Lord and Our Lady will explain why they had a certain number of this or a certain number of that, and there's quite a lot of. Um, description of physical appearance of course um but also descriptions of yes the mystical significance of various objects that our lord and our lady are using which is a little bit patristic really because a lot of the fathers had a great interest in seeing a mystical significance on what seemed like minor details so saint bridget of sweden she's someone that was um um well wealthy lady she wasn't a queen but she was a noble woman and she um she had a had a family but then later on in life joined the convent founding a religious order and becoming a well-traveled lady going to rome and basically trying to tell the pope that he needs to live a much better and holier life um so let me just give you to begin with her first apparition, her first uh, apparition, our Lord, um, the girl when Bridget uh, spoke to our Lord and asked him, who has caused you to suffer like this? She sees him hanging on the cross and he replies, they who despise me and spurn my love for them. And the rest of her life, St. Bridget spent trying to make up for the love uh, that others fail to give our Lord. So let me read a few insights that St. Bridget gives us on the life of Jesus and Mary. Often, often it's, it's, um, Bridget records what our Lord and his mother say to her. And sometimes it's various saints as well, like John the Baptist or someone. And so often her revelations are, will begin with our lady said, or the blessed Virgin said, or our Lord said to me, so uh, because she she hears things as much as she sees them she does see things but also she is informed of things by our lord and his holy mother so a little piece now about our lady um in the moment of the the annunciation she says 
alone by myself and placing all my hope in God, an inspiration about God's great power came over me. And I recalled how the angels and everything created serve him and how his glory is indescribable and unlimited. While I was fascinated by this thought, I saw three wonderful things. I saw a star, but not the kind that shines in the sky. I saw a light, but not the kind that shines in this world. I smelled a fragrance, but not of herbs or anything else of this world. It was most delightful and truly indescribable, and it filled me up so completely that I was overcome with joy. And it continues. After this, I immediately heard a voice, but not from a human mouth. And when I heard it, I shuddered with great fear that it might be an illusion or a mockery by an evil spirit. But shortly after this, an angel of God appeared before me. He was like the most handsome of men, but not in the flesh as is the body of a created man. And he said to me, hell full of grace, the Lord is with thee. When I heard this, I wondered what he meant and why he had come to me with such a greeting. For I knew and believed that I was unworthy of any such thing or any good thing. However, I also knew that nothing is impossible for God if he desires it. You know, so you, maybe you got there as I read it out what I meant by the numbers and the medieval style, which is, which you don't, you know, when you, when you read the revelations of Anne Catherine Emmerich or if, even the Mobile Mary of Agrida, which is, who is closer to St. Bridget's age, the, 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 um, the arrangement uh, is very different in St. Bridget and the things she notices are very different. Um, so let me find uh, something else that is uh, a beautiful insight. Um, yeah, how about an insight around the nativity? You may know this, that, but a lot, of, a lot of art, a lot of famous works of art from the high, med high medieval period are, are, are works of art that are based on the revelations of St. Bridget. If you ever see the picture of, rather strange to us, the picture of um, kneeling Mary, kneeling Joseph, and the baby Jesus lying on the floor, glowing. That's St. Bridget. St. Bridget gives us that beautiful description of, of just after, just after the birth of our Lord. So let me share something. Let me share something. Yeah, this is Our Lady describing the birth. And so sudden and momentary was that manner of giving birth that I was unable to notice or discern how or in what manner. Oh, no, I've got it wrong. It's it's same Bridget. Let me continue. How or in what member she was giving birth. But yet at once I saw that glorious infant lying on the earth naked and glowing in the greatest of neatness his flesh was most clean of all filth and uncleanness i saw also the afterbirth lying wrapped neatly beside him kind of a kind of a you know we don't think about those things but we're dealing with medieval world and the very uh, real nature of, of childbirth um and when I heard the wonderfully sweet and most dulcet songs of the angels and the virgin's womb, which before the birth had been very swollen, at once retracted and her body then looking wonderfully beautiful and delicate. You know, very physical descriptions of, of Our Lady that we get after the birth. Let me just uh, make sure I don't give you um, uh, mislead you here when I mentioned about the graphic nature of a birth, it's very clear in St. Bridget's revelations that it's a painless birth, that it's a special conception that, uh, that uh, occurs, a special birth that occurs. Um, but it sounds like, um, it sounds like, you know, the uh, placenta um, also, also was there, was involved physically. And it's, it's interesting that she would tell us that. Um, okay. And now the next scene. When these things were accomplished, the old man, St. Joseph, entered, and prostrating on the earth, he adored the child on bended knee and wept for his joy. Not even at the birth was the virgin changed in colour or by infirmity, nor did she experience the same bodily weakness that comes for women after giving birth. You know, St. Bridget knows about that as well, being, being a mother. 
Our lady therefore arose and holding the boy in her arms, put him in the manger. Then both of them on their bending knees continue to adore the child with gladness and immense joy. So she picks him up and they adore him some more in the manger, which picked, which again is a very, uh, that's obviously in the gospels of them adoring him, but maybe with, with adoring him with the hands joined in a gesture of profound adoration, that's something St. Bridget is helping us to imagine more. Okay. Let me give you something very peculiar, very characteristic of St. Bridget now in her, when our Lord talks about, um, maybe this is appropriate, um, describing our Lord's wisdom, um, why he didn't come into the world fully grown. Let me, let me share this song with you because again, it shows a really medieval style. Our Lord said to me, as to why I did not disclose my divinity to people in general, I answer, although the devil lost the dignity of his first state, still he did not lose his cunning which belongs to him for the trial of the good and for his own shame. In order that my human form might grow and reach its determined age, it was necess necessary to hide the mystery of my divinity from the devil, because I wanted to enter hidden into combat with the devil, and because I resolved to be despised in order to overthrow human pride. The very teachers of the Lord despised me because I came as a humble man and because they were proud and they did not want to hear about true justice, which comes from faith in my redemption. They shall therefore be confounded when the son of perdition comes in his pride. Will such proud men enter heaven? Certainly not. I came as a humble man in order that people might learn humility and I hid myself from the proud because they wish to understand neither my justice nor their very selves. So that's an insight because it tells us something about our Lord's public ministry and we can imagine him carrying out his public ministry in a particular way after, after reading that insight as, as having a kind, of, um, a kind of aversion to the proud in his, in his public ministry. Let me talk a little bit about the Passion because St. Bridget certainly has a lot of insights into the Passion. You could say she was like the Anne Catherine Emmerich of her day. The, the, um, in the um, meditations of, in the revelations of St. Bridget, quite a large section is, is orientated towards the descriptions of the Passion. So let me, let me get this very graphic, give, show you this very graphic description of our Lord going to the pillar. The Holy Virgin said, as the Lord was brought to the pillar, he was then dragged along the ground and throw down so cruelly and violently that it knocked his head and broke his teeth. He was struck on his neck and cheek so forcefully that the sound of the blows reached my ears. At the command of the execution, he undressed himself and freely hugged the pillar. He was bound with a rope and then scourged with barbed whips. The barbs caught in his skin and were then pulled backwards not just tearing but plowing into him so as to wound his whole body wow let me let me read another aspect of the scourging because it provides us with an insight that we don't have in the gospel and didn't feature in the passion of the christ or anything else but um is a really nice or interesting insight then all my sons fled from him and his enemies came together from all directions and stood there scourging his body which was pure from every stain and sin i was standing nearby and at the very first lashing i fell down as if i were dead when i regained consciousness i saw his body whipped and scourged so badly that his ribs were visible what was even more terrible was when the whip was pulled out his flesh was furrowed and torn by it just as the earth is by a plow as my son was, son was standing there, all bloody and wounded, so that no place could be found on him that was still intact, and no sound spot could be scourged, then someone present there, aroused in spirit, asked, Are you going to kill him before he is even judged? And cut off his bonds immediately. And then we're told that the man just runs off. You know, so there's this, this figure, this figure, you know, that, that interrupts the scene. Oh my, it's, it's, uh, the, um, the descriptions of the passion are very, um, graphic, very physical. Maybe I'll, I will read just a little bit, an insight into, 
into our Lord's um, suffering on the cross to give you an example of that. Let me. Yeah, St. Bridget said, Then, therefore, in distress from the exceeding anguish of his pain, and already near to death, he cried to the Father in a loud and tearful voice. He then had pale lips, a bloody tongue, and a sunken abdomen that adhered to his back, as if he had no organs within. A second time also he cried out again in the greatest of pain and anxiety, O oh, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Then his head raising itself a little, immediately bowed, and thus he sent forth his spirit. When his mother saw these things, she trembled at that immense bitterness and would have fallen onto the earth if she had not been supported by the other women. It's, um, it's quite something, the descriptions of, of the passion. She's, she's taught by Our Lady, St. Bridget is taught by Our Lady, and so we, we do gain quite a lot of teaching from Our Lady throughout the book as to what it is to be a good Christian or a good wife or a good mother. And we also le learn about um, Our Lady, Our Lady's role in the early church, that Our Lady, it says, um, St. Bridget uh, exclaims, Rejoice still more, my Lady, O Virgin Mary, and at your joy, let all the world rejoice. For many years after his ascension, your son permitted you to remain in this world for the consolation of his friends and for the strengthening of the faith, for the relief of the poor and for the sound counselling of the apostles. Then through your prudent words, your seemly behaviour and your virtuous deeds, your son converted countless Jews and infidel pagans to the Catholic faith. And by wondrously illuminating them, he enlightened them to confess that you are a virgin mother and that he, your son, is God with a true human nature. So, so we, we get some insights about Our Lady in the early church. Um, and just one more before we close, I think. Uh, again, to give you something of the, the medieval uh, flavour of, of her writings that... Um, um, some of the things she picks up on. Yeah, here we go. This would be, I suppose, a description of Our Lady's coronation in heaven. St. Bridget saw the Queen of Heaven, the Mother of God, wearing a priceless and beautiful crown on her head, and her wonderfully shining and indescribable beautiful hair hanging down over her shoulders. She wore a golden tunic, shining with indescribable light and a blue mantle of the colour azure or a clear sky full of wonder at such a lovely sight she stood there totally enraptured and amazed at that moment blessed john the baptist appeared to her and said listen closely to what all this signifies the crown signifies that she is the queen and lady and mother of the king of angels the hair hanging down signifies that she is an unstained and pure virgin. The, the sky-coloured mantle signifies that all worldly things were as dead in her heart and will. Were as dead in her heart and will. The golden tunic signifies that she was fervent and burning in the love of God, both inwardly and outwardly. So that's some of that kind of description thing, which is throughout St. Bridget's writings. So I hope I, I don't think I've done justice at all to the insights that are in St. Bridget's writings. But thankfully, her works are in the public domain and you can go through her, uh, her revelations. I've, I've read through them and I have compiled a book of rosary meditations that uh, collect some of these insights and attach them to the beads of the Holy Rosary, which, um, which you might want to take advantage of. But otherwise, you can certainly go and explore her revelations for yourself and uh, meditate upon her revelations, which are full of, um, you know, full of depths and uh, raising, um, raising perhaps new interpretations on aspects of our Lord's life and, and even aspects of scenery that in our modern world we perhaps might not be drawn to focus into as much. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.